So for lesson 11.4, we're gonna take a look at the central limit theorem. And what this is gonna do, it's very, very powerful. What it's gonna do is it's going to take distributions that aren't necessarily normal in makeup, but yet if, as long as we have enough samples, we can view it as a normal distribution. So let me say it this way, as the number of samples increases indefinitely, you can begin to use whatever, regardless of the distribution, you can begin to use central limit theorem to solve it. And so the central limit theorem is gonna basically treat it as a normal distribution, if you will, okay? And so that's what we're gonna look at today. So you might hear me say often uh, like sampling distribution or things like that. So let me start off with some uh, formulas first. And it says, so starting off, as the sampling size increases, so as we get more and more cases, we wouldn't do this if you only had 10 cases of something or 30 cases, as it increases indefinitely. So as we start getting many and many and many samples, the shape of the distribution, the sample means, and the standard deviation will approach a normal distribution. So as sample size increases, it'll become more and more normalized. Secondly, the distribution will have a mean and a standard deviation. Now I want you to notice what's going to happen. The standard deviation, when you change from the whatever distribution it was into the central limit theorem, the standard deviation symbolized here as you learn sigma x bar or uh, sample mean here, is going to be whatever the original standard deviation was divided by the square root of the samples. That's going to be our formula there. So the mean will stay the same. The z value, this is very similar to the formula we saw earlier in the bell ringer, will be the x bar, which means the sample mean minus the original mean uh, or perceived mean, if you will, divided by the new standard deviation, or what you'll learn is could be called the standard error. Okay, so with that, we have a few formulas here. It says executives of an entertainment company determined that a first year movie revenues averages $2.1 million. They assume the variable is normally distributed, so it's assumption, with a standard deviation of 0.8 million. If a random sample of 16 movies is selected, find the probability that the mean revenue of the sample is more than 2.5 million. So kind of giving us a picture here, we're assuming that the mean is 2.1 million. I'm gonna refresh this just to get rid of some stuff. And let me go back over here. So looking at the normal distribution here, we're assuming that $2.1 million is our, uh, our mean. And we'd assume it has a standard deviation of 0.8 million. 0 0.8 million. So here's our uh, PDF, or probability distribution function. And it says, if a random sample of 16 movies is selected, find the probability that the mean of the revenue sample is more than 2.5 million. And so a lot of people are gonna say, okay, so to be more than 2.5, let's just put that right here. And let's say that might be the answer. Now we have a problem when you look at this diagram here, it doesn't seem to match the probability over here. Okay, so what gives? Well, we're looking at a few different things in this problem. First, we are gonna say the mean is 2.1 million. and this is in money. And the original standard deviation was, just like we said, 0 0.8 million. Okay, but here's where things get different. What we're gonna do here in this problem is we're gonna say, all right, we have 16 samples. And of that samples, we wanna say the sample mean, that's this symbol here, the sample mean is 2.5 million. All right, so what are the formulas we just saw on the previous pages? Well, the first uh, just told us that we could find the uh, standard deviation for a set of samples using this formula here. So that's what I'm gonna find now, is I'm gonna come over here and say, all right, the sample standard deviation, or the standard error, would be the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n which means, and so again, this is the formula I'm, I'm using right here. 
which means I would have 0 0.8 divided by the square root of 16, which the square root of 16 is four. So 0.8 divided by four is gonna be 0 0.2. Okay, so there's one value we're gonna need. Secondly, uh, what we learn on the next slide is that we can get the Z value using this formula here. And so we'll say the Z value, it's going to equal X bar, the sample mean minus the perceived mean or the known mean of the distribution divided by the standard deviation of that sample, which means I would have X bar is 2.5 million minus the mean, which is 2.1, all that divided by uh, the standard error, 0 0.2. Let's, let me change this to black so you can see where I'm getting this, 0 0.2. Okay, so what is this value gonna give us? Well. Uh, 2.5 minus 2.1 is 0.4. When you divide that by 0.2, you get two. So that's the Z value. So what that means is if I go here, now that was my curve that I said, that's not looking right. What I'm gonna do is just for a second here, I'm gonna turn this off, go to the central li limit theorem. And I'm gonna say, okay, the mean of the population or the mean of the whole was 2.1. My standard deviation of the whole was 0 0.8. The number of samples is 16. The mean of the sample was 2.5. All right, and I am going to now come over here. And so this is the standard deviation of the sample, which is at 0 0.2, the same thing we got. And so the Z values, here it is, the first one for the central limit theorem. And when I come down here, uh, what we're gonna use is the normal distribution so it's zero comma one is the normal distribution. And we wanna find what's the probability of it being greater than this line two here. And so if I put a two, this picture, you can start to see matches this picture very well. And so the odds would be uh, about 2.27 or 2.28%. This right there would be 2.28%. That's the probability that the mean is more than 2.5 million. So on this, I wanna make sure you're aware that this on the central limit theorem, it standardizes this normal curve. So it puts the mean at zero and this value right there is two. That's the Z value of two. So there'd be the Z value of one and so on. Uh, that would be one, two, and we we're looking at two. And so it would be 2.28%. All right, with that, I'm gonna let you try your first. So again, what I want you to do, so you're not confused, because I, I know I started with a normal distribution. We're not gonna use a normal distribution. We're gonna use a central limit theorem. So I want you to use a central limit theorem and plug in the values to see if you can uh, solve for the probability of the mean number of boats being less than 28. Pause the video if you need more time. 